Rubio, who is supported by the Tea Party, claims that Governor Crist is sounding more like a Democrat on issues like offshore drilling and health care. So what exactly does he mean? We're joined now by Marco Rubio, the GOP nominee for Senate. Thanks so much for getting up today and joining us this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, so, Chris, let's talk about oil spill first because um, the legislative uh, special session that he called is going to st talk specifically about oil drilling. What is his aim and why do you think it's wrong? Well, first of all, let me point out to everyone who's watching that uh, offshore drilling in Florida's waters is already illegal. It's prohibited by statute. He called a special session of the legislature to prohibit something that's already illegal. What they need to do and what luckily the leadership of the legislature is going to do is come back in a month and have a special session on the economic impact that the oil spill has had and, and to undertake a series of real measures. I think, unfortunately, this was used as a photo op. It was an opportunity to get on camera and talk about the oil spill again in an effort to help a U.S. Senate campaign. But that's not what the people of Northwest Florida care about. What they want is for the government to do what it can to help them survive economically during this very difficult period. How many jobs do you think are affected by the, the administration's moratorium and then this possible um, you know, movement at this legislative session? Well, our moratorium doesn't impact Florida because, we, as I said, we don't drill off of Florida's right. waters. But the oil spill is having a dramatic impact on jobs. It's almost incalculable. That area of the state, this is their peak tourism season. And uh, it's been wiped out by this, unfortunately. And so they're going to need all sorts of relief in the short term to help them survive. Because these businesses, if they go out of business, they're not going to be able to come back into business when times get better. Can we talk about the other, um, I think, part of this story that's really interesting, the flip-flop on health care. Chris, um, back then, it was quoted saying, once in the U.S. Senate, I will fight to repeal this government takeover of health care. But now, he said, he thinks it should be modified, um, which is basically um, not going for a repeal and not uh, what he was when he was running as a Republican. Uh, now he's independent and has changed his tune. What do you think that will mean to the voters of Florida? Well, first of all, it's important to remember that statement that you just read was made three months ago, uh, not three years ago. So that's the first thing. I think what it means is very simple. This election is going to come down to a very simple choice. If you like the direction this country is going, if you think Barack Obama and Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi are doing a good job for America, then there's going to be two other people on the ballot you can vote. I'm certainly not your candidate. If what you want to send to Washington is someone who will act as a check and balance on the direction that Harry Reid and others want to take our country, then I'm the only one running in Florida that will do that. And, and, and I think Obamacare is a prime example of it. It is a destructive, a job-destroying measure. Now, I can't tell you how many small business owners I know who are not growing jobs. Some are going to begin laying people off because of the uncertainty and the dramatic economic consequence of this law taking effect. Thank you so much. Um, it's going to be a very interesting race to watch. It's one of the most important ones, and we appreciate you coming on today. Thank you.